break it is one of the very important uh, control component of uh, a vehicle brakes are used as a stopping medium to stop or slow down the vehicle or to prevent the vehicle movement when it is parked during braking the kinetic energy of the vehicle is dissipated as heat and the braking process it is the reverse of accelerating a vehicle once when accelerating a vehicle the vehicle speed is increased during braking the vehicle speed is decreased when driving a vehicle engine torque produces a tractive effort at the driving wheels and during braking braking torque at the brake drums which you are going to see in the figure braking torque at the brake drums produces a negative tractive effort or reducing force at the braking wheels similar to acceleration the retarding force and the rate of deceleration are also limited by adhesion available between the tire and the ground then what the brake should do the brake the brakes must be capable of decreasing the vehicle speed faster than the engine accelerates it while moving down a steep whenever you are moving down a steep gradient the brakes are used to control the vehicle and brakes remain in action for a longer time this needs the efficient cooling of the braking system if the cooling system is not much efficient we may have to land up a problem whenever we are moving down a steep gradient because the brake may not uh, do their function properly in controlling the vehicle okay here the cooling system of the brake it is very very efficient and particularly the brake should be capable to enough decrease the speed whenever moving down the gradient steep gradient and it should be capable to increase the speed whenever is support whenever it is climbing and the main function is what braking braking during braking process what is going to happen is the kinetic energy of the vehicle dissipated as heat and uh, the frictional force is developed which uh, controls and which reduces the speed of the vehicle this is what it is going to happen and as far as this brakes are concerned brakes are the devices used to stop any vehicle by applying frictional forces i was telling whenever the brakes are applied the kinetic energy of the vehicle is converted into heat in the form of frictional forces and brake it is one of the very important control component of the vehicle and brakes are required to stop the vehicle within the smallest possible distance remember okay so suddenly whenever we are driving the vehicle due to some reasons we have we may have to stop the vehicle okay and this is possible with the good quality of a brake during this duration brake should be capable enough to stop the vehicle within the smallest possible distance and this is done by brakes and braking process this is possible by converting kinetic energy of vehicle into heat energy which is dissipated into the atmosphere and remember braking it is nothing but a decelerating process it is the reverse of the accelerating a vehicle okay again i will repeat brakes are used as a stopping medium to stop or slow down the vehicle or to prevent the vehicle movement when it is parked okay during braking what is going to happen kinetic energy of the vehicle is converted into heat energy which is dissipated into atmosphere 
brakes are one of the important control component of vehicle and it, as we have seen in the previous uh, discussions we have seen steering steering also one of the very important uh, component in automobile on the similar lines brakes are also one of the very important component for controlling the vehicle or control vehicle unit okay now now what are the required we should discuss about what are the requirement of braking as we have already seen the function of brakes is to develop a suitable retarding force to stop the vehicle within minimum possible distance and converts kinetic energy of the vehicle into heat which is being dissipated to the atmosphere this is the main function of the brake the main function of brake is to develop a suitable a retarding force to stop the vehicle with minimum possible distance and converts kinetic energy of the vehicle into heat which is being dissipated to the atmosphere to perform to perform this function the brake system has to satisfy the following requirements what are the following requirements irrespective of the vehicle speed remember concentrate irres whatever the vehicle speed it may be irrespective of vehicle speed irrespective of load conditions on the automobile and the type of road on which the automobile is moving the brake must produce maximum possible retarding force and deceleration okay the brakes must produce maximum possible retarding force and deceleration irrespective of the vehicle speed the load conditions and the type of the road on which the vehicle is moving this is the first requirement as far as the braking system is concerned and irrespective of the road condition and load the pedal brake pedal effort required should be same okay generally the brake pedal whenever you must have driven the car or bus or any vehicle the brake pedal must be either in hand or on the foot okay irrespective of road condition and load the pedal the brake pedal effort required should be same i am telling for whenever whenever you are this thing uh, moving down the downstream gradient that time uh, you have to st stop the vehicle and the vehicle speed has to be decelerated during that duration whatever the brake it is requ required once when the vehicle is moving on the flat road the same uh, effort should be needed while moving down the downstream gradient of the vehicle okay and another important requirement of braking system is the response time of braking system should be as minimum as possible what do you mean by response time whenever you apply the brake the brake should respond as quicker as possible so that the vehicle speed can be decelerated according to the requirement of the driver okay and another thing is another requirement you, here you can find the brakes must be strong enough to stop the vehicle within a minimum distance in emergency condition what are the emergency condition you are moving on road some animal or somebody are crossing the road and if that situation is close to the vehicle then the vehicle has to be stopped immediately during that duration that is this emergency situa situation we can say during that dur duration the brakes must be capable enough to stop the vehicle within a minimum distance within a minimum distance brakes must have good anti fade characteristics 
that is their effectiveness should not decrease with prolonged application this requirement demands cooling of brakes should be very efficient okay brakes must have good anti fade characteristics with prolonged uh, uh, application of the brake the sometimes brake may not after certain duration of its usage the brake may not work properly but brakes must be designed in such a way that they should have good anti fade characteristics that is their effectiveness should not decrease the prolong as far as the their capability is concerned decreasing the speed and the anti fade characteristics can be achieved by having a better cooling of brakes better cooling of braking system okay the brake system should not be affected by water dust road grit etc the brake system should not be affected by water what do you mean by water so whenever there is a rain during that duration we are moving on road what is going to happen due to some reasons we want to stop the vehicle we want to decelerate the vehicle we are going to apply the this thing okay generally whenever uh, during such situation uh, the brake may not apply quickly okay during that situation also the brake should be capable enough to decelerate the speed of vehicle okay the brake system should not be affected by water dust road grit etc another very important requirement if we look into the braking system should be as light as possible easy to maintain and should give long economical life the braking system should be as light it should be very light to handle okay it should be very light to handle the braking system should be as light as possible easy to maintain and should give long economical life the braking system should produce less noise and vibrations the braking system should produce less noise and vibrations the system should facilitate the use of independent secondary brake and parking brake see generally you must have seen in car okay so whenever you are parking we are using the hand brake that is mechanical brake that indicates the braking system should facilitate to use of independent secondary brake or parking brake this is what the meaning of it and now we should see what are the now we have seen what are the functions of brake and what are the requirements of brake main function of brake you should remember the function of brakes is to develop a suitable retarding force to stop the vehicle within minimum possible distance and converts kinetic energy of vehicle into heat is being dissipated to atmosphere again i am repeating brakes the what is brake brake its function is to develop suitable retarding force to stop the vehicle within minimum possible distance and converts kinetic energy of the vehicle into heat which is being dissipated to atmosphere some disturbance is coming try to minimize this okay to perform the above to perform the above function we have seen what are the basic requirements of brake okay and now we should discuss about please different types of brakes mechanical brakes hydraulic brakes electric brakes vacuum brakes air brakes by wire brakes now we should see the drum brakes 
this is one of the important type of break which is quite frequently used and more predominantly used in almost all the bikes okay what is this drum brake the figure it is in front of you these brakes are most commonly used and brake shoes are actuated by mechanical means or toggle lever and makes contact with the inside of the brake drum you can see the figure the rods and levers decreases the pedal effort required by the driver through mechanical advantage or lever this consists of a brake drum which is fixed to the hub of the road and the back plate is mounted on the axle casing on the front axle side the back plate is fixed back plate is fixed to the steering knuckle to the bolt you can see the expander the expander anchor and brake shoes all are supported on the back plate which is made from pressed steel sheet you keep on seeing the figure it, i am explaining it it protects the drum and shoe assembly from mud and dust as it absorbs the complete torque reaction of the shoes it is also called the torque plate the torque plate expander two brake shoes which are semi circular in shape are anchored on the back plate friction images are attached on the outer periphery of the brake shoes through which it makes contact with the drum the brake shoe rubs against wheel rim through friction lining and locks the wheel one or two retractor springs are used which keep the brake shoes away from the drum when the brakes are not applied the brake shoes are anchored at one end on the drum and the other end force is applied by using some brake actuating mechanism maybe an expander or wheel cylinder the expander is operated by using a link rod which is connected to the brake pedal you can see the figure the expander forces the brake show to rub against revolving wheel drum there is a uh, the, it is connected to the disc is this drum is connected to the wheel drum the expander forces the brake show to rub against revolving wheel drum from inside thereby applying the brakes an adjuster you can see the adjuster you can see the adjuster an adjuster serves to adjust the wear of friction lining with use okay as far as the drum brakes are concerned there is a shoe the shoe hold down spring the shoe press against a spinning surface this surface is called drum which is fixed to the wheel the drum brakes have more pores than the disc brake after this we are going to discuss about what is disc brake drum brakes have more pores than disc brakes and are harder to service but they are less expensive to the manufacturer drum brakes are less expensive compared to disc brake which we are going to discuss but drum brakes have more pores and it is very difficult to service okay but even in spite of this because of its cost the drum brakes are more predominantly used in maximum vehicles now we should discuss about the disc brake okay what is this disc brake the this disc brake differs from drum brakes in the use of heavy disc or rotor which replaces the drum drum is very heavy compared to disc and the drum brake what are the drum it is replaced by disc the disc is bolted to the wheel hub 
you can see the disc is bolted to the wheel hub and revolves with it the caliper is a stationary housing connected to the axle casing or stub axle and consists of two hydraulic pistons two hydraulic pistons okay this brake has an excellent cooling characteristics making it highly resistant to brake When Hello. Hello. When the brakes are applied, hydraulic pressure is built up behind the piston and the friction pads are forced inward against revolving the disc you can see the figure figure is it is neatly shown okay this force of the friction pad on both sides will retort the disc mm -hmm. on releasing the brakes the rubber sealing rings acts as return springs and causes the piston and hence friction pads to move away from the disc thereby releasing it this requires higher operating force than the drum type okay so here you can see a disc which you can see disc brake consists of a coaster the disc it is made up of coaster which is bolted to the wheel hub and stationary housing called caliper you can see the caliper is there caliper okay and this caliper is connected to some stationary part of the y vertical like axle when brakes are applied piston move friction pads into contact with the disc applying equal and opposite force on the disc on releasing the brakes the rubber sealing rings act as return springs and retract piston and friction pads away from the disc and another important point is the uh, as far as the heaviness is concerned the disc is the uh, weight of the disc is uh, lesser than what we have seen the previous the drum type of brakes okay no. now we can make the comparison between the drum brakes and disc brake and if we will comparison if you make it the cooling is more efficient in case of uh, disc brake whereas it is less efficient in case of drum brakes as the in case if you look into disc brakes as the flat friction pads are used wear is more uniform in disc brakes whereas in case of drum brakes semicircular friction lining on the brake results in non uniform wear the weight of uh, the disc inertia whereas the weight of uh, drum brakes it is more comparatively disc brake and due to this it leads to comparatively more inertia and as far as the disc brakes are concerned the disc brakes are more stable whereas drum brakes are comparatively less stable the maintenance and servicing of drum brakes the maintenance and servicing of disc brake it is easy whereas servicing of drum brake it, it takes more time for removing the drum from the system okay and another point drum brakes will have more parts compared to disc brakes and disc brakes have better anti fade characteristics whereas in case of drum brakes the braking effect decreases with prolonged application of brakes in case of disc brakes disc brakes do not have self servo action 
and decreases braking force. The brake shoe experience self servo action and hence require the greater force. As far as the disc brakes are concerned, in the disc brakes, the total frictional area available is less. Whereas in drum brakes, the total frictional area available is more. These are the different types of comparison what we can make. But in spite of this, the drum brakes, the manufacturing of drum brakes, it is cheaper compared to disc brakes. And drum brakes are more predominantly used in maximum vehicles compared to disc brakes. And these are the different uh, comparisons what we can make. And one more point remember, whether it is a disc brake or drum brake, these are the types of mechanical brakes. And as far as this uh, mechanical brakes are concerned, already we have discussed two types of mechanical brakes drum brake and disc brake okay presently all the modern cars are cars all the modern cars all the modern vehicles are using hydraulic brakes as service brakes but still today the parking brakes are used with made up of with mechanical braking system mechanical brakes assemblies consisting of mechanical elements for slowing or stopping the vehicle. Mechanical brakes use levers or linkages to transmit force from one point to another. There are several types of mechanical brakes. Band brakes, it is one of the important type which we are going to discuss after this. It is the simplest brake configuration, have a metal band lined with heat and wear resistant friction material drum brakes which we have seen it's working as well as we compared this drum with brakes these are the two types of mechanical brakes which we have seen and uh, disc brake and drum brakes more predominantly used in maximum of the automobile okay remember the modern cars the modern vehicle modern automobile all are using maximum hydraulic brakes but mechanical brakes are still used in parking and for emergency braking purpose okay another advantage of this mechanical brakes is in the mechanical brakes the pressure from the brake pedal is transmitted to the wheel brakes directly through rods and shafts or cables and shafts okay so this is how the mechanical braking system it works and as far as this band brake is concerned it is one type of uh, it is one type of mechanical brake and this band brakes it is the simplest brake of among the mechanical brake and these brakes have these makes brakes have a metal band this is the cursor i am bringing here this is the metal band lined with heat and wear resistant frictional material okay and uh, these brakes are preferred in earlier vehicles which were manufactured before 1990 now these brakes are replaced with disc brake as well as drum brakes according to the requirement of the vehicle okay now we should see the hydraulic brake as it is said the hydraulic brakes are more predominantly used are used in general in all the modern vehicles the hydraulic braking system consists of a master cylinder steel tubing to form connecting lines and one or two wheel cylinders for each wheel in this type of hydraulic brakes the pedal force is transmitted to the brake shoes through brake fluid the force applied to the pedal is multiplied and is transmitted to all the brake shoes which are connected to the 
wheels. The brake fluid is incompressible and it exerts equal pressure in all directions. Generally, the brake fluid, which is used in the hydraulic braking system, is glycol ethyl. The brake pedal force is equally applied, and all the four wheel cylinders and produces equal braking effort on all the wheels. The main advantage of this hydraulic braking system is the brake pedal force is equally applied on all the wheel cylinders and produces equal braking effect on all the wheel. If it is four or six, whatever the number of wheels, it will produce equal braking effect on all the wheels. Okay, this is how the this thing will happen. And the the force of transmission, as far as this uh, it is concerned, the force of transmission is based on the Pascal's law, which states that when pressure is exerted on a confined liquid, the Pascal's law, when pressure is exerted on a confined liquid, it transmits pressure without loss equally in all directions. Okay. The, as far as the hydraulic brakes, I'm telling, it is used in majority of the vehicles. In majority of the modern cars, modern vehicles, the main advantage of this is this uh, will produce, this braking system will produce equal braking effect on all the wheels. Okay. When the driver operates the brake pedal, it exerts a force on the piston of master cylinder which is being transmitted to each wheel cylinder. Just you see it, the piston in the wheel cylinder transfers this force to the brake shoes, this force to the brake shoes. Okay. When, again, I will repeat, when the driver operates, I am telling the working principle with figure, you can see, when the driver operates the brake pedal, it exerts a force on the piston of the master cylinder, which is being transmitted to each wheel cylinder. If the, there are four wheels, the four wheel cylinders, each wheel is provided with one wheel cylinder. The piston in the wheel cylinder transfers this force to the brake shoes. The movement of piston in the master cylinder, once when the driver applies brake on the brake pedal, there is a movement on the uh, piston in the master cylinder. This movement of piston in the master cylinder causes the piston in wheel cylinders to move until the brake shoes engage the revolving brake drum. If an attempt is made to depress the master cylinder piston, behind this point will transmit only pressure, but not the motion. Okay. Again, I'm repeating the once when the driver applies the uh, brake on his uh, brake pedal, the piston in the master cylinder will move. This force will act on the wheel cylinders. The piston in the wheel cylinders will move and the braking effect will be achieved. And in the figure, you can see, you can see the figure, okay. The, this figure, it shows a hydraulic brake system. Hydraulic brake system. This figure, just you concentrate. On the front wheels, disc brakes are provided. On the front wheels, disc brakes may be used. Okay. And on the rear wheels also, disc brakes are used. But nowadays, on rear wheels, disc brakes are used. Whereas on front wheels, drum brakes are preferred. Okay. A small pressure of about 50 kilopascals is applied is maintained in the steel piping to keep the field cylinder piston. See, this is the master cylinder. I will bring the this thing. This is a very important component. This we are going to discuss in detail. 
a small pressure of about 50 kilopascals is maintained in steel piping to keep the wheel cylinder pistons in the expanded position when brakes are not applied. This avoids or this minimizes, this prevents the entry of air into the wheel cylinder when the brakes are released. If there is a small leakage of air into the wheel cylinder, then entire braking system will become useless. This point you remember, okay? The, as far as the hydraulic brake is concerned, this is an arrangement as shown in the figure, which uses the fluid, the fluid used in this uh, hydraulic braking system, as I was telling, it is ethylene glycol. The fluid which is used, uh, note down, the fluid which is used in hydraulic braking system is ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol to transfer pressure from the controlling unit to the actual brake mechanism of the vehicle. There are different forms you can see. The master cylinder you can see, the push rod you can see, the master cylinder brake pedal, it will be in the control of uh, the driver and the brake caliper assembly. And one more figure which I've taken from the net source for your reference. Here you can have a clear cut picture about the hydraulic braking system. See here you can see the disc brakes you can see and rotor this is the wheel I will bring the cursor here you can quite easily you can see and this is the brake fluid and this is the main important component master cylinder okay so this is the pressure transducer this is brake pedal, which is uh, controlled by the driver. Load cells are there in the brake pedal. 